proudly sponsored by Premier Guns. Here's Newsnight with Alex Sayer. Good evening everyone. Lots to get through this evening, so if you find I'm going a bit quickly, just press that space bar, that tends to slow me down, and also hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Right, on with the news. Can you believe it? Steel shot through full choke. This is a first. I haven't heard of this before. Here's Matthew telling you all about it. Uh, it's the waterfowl H2O choke and you can put any material through that choke regardless of the constriction of it, which as you can see by the title UFO is tight. So you can put steel through this. This is full stroke, extra full choke. There, there is no limitations with this choke. You can put steel through it, not a problem. You can only buy these at Premier Gun. So get in touch and we will sort you out with your steel shot chokes. So that was the big news on these Muller chokes, ladies and gentlemen. As he says, it, they are only available from Premier Guns, and I hope this allays many of the concerns some of you have had with steel shot. Obviously, it's providing your barrels are superior steel proofed, but take a look, give the shop a ring, tell them what you've got, and they'll sort you out. They are postable as well, ladies and gentlemen. So that's the first bit of excellent news. The second bit of excellent news, which I'm sure you've heard, is uh, Wild Justice losing yet another court case. Oh dear, where will they stop? The legislation on burning was only reviewed last year. I don't want to spend too much time on this, and I don't want to go into too many details, but here are the papers of the court, which says it's not arguable, it's not arguable, and basically there's no evidence. So um, that sort of took care of that, really. They are now turning their attention to local authorities. So watch out, because I'll be on to you next. It does rather give us a bit of a break, I suppose. In their most recent failing, the Countryside Alliance, BASP, the Moreland Group, the National Gamekeepers Organisation were registered as interested parties. And the costs payable were donated to the Gamekeepers Welfare Trust. Here's Ruth to tell us a bit more about the organisation. We support a huge range of circumstances, ill health, redundancy, bereavement, housing issues, all kinds of things. If you're not sure of the full range of work that we do, please take a few minutes to have a look at our website. We're online at thegamekeeperswelfaretrust.com and you can also follow our work on Facebook, Twitter, Insta and LinkedIn. Again, thank you to Basque, the NGO, the Countryside Alliance and the Moorland Association for their kind donation. Thanks Ruth, what a great outcome. Now speaking of charity and shooting organisations, Nottingham and District Gun Club have just raised £750 for prostate cancer with their automatic ball trap memorial shoot and trophy. Take a look at this. If you do have any new stories or charity shoots coming up that you'd like advertised, just let me know. Now, on to the national news. I'm not a Guardian reader myself, uh, more of an express girl these days, but uh, take a look at this. Fantastic write-up about clay shooting, really well written, gives an element of fun, and also addresses the £20,000 fine if a bird of prey happens to be shot. Although I'm not aware that's ever happened before. Hopefully we'll see a bit of a boost from this on the shooting grounds. Certainly the instructor did, because they had him down as the owner of Bisley. <laughs> but that was all sorted out in the end. Now, last week I told you about the survey from the Association of Police and Crime Commissioners. On the day that closed, these new guidelines were issued. They're going to come into effect on the 1st of November. All new applicants will now have their social media checked and their financial history looked into. I'd like to welcome onto the show Mr Rupert Matthews, who's going to answer some of these questions for me. Hello Rupert, I thought I'd invite you because you're the sort of the middle man between the government and the police, is that right? Strictly speaking, I'm the middle man between the, uh, the public and the police force, but yes, we get a lot of uh, stuff coming from the government into the office as well, yes. Are you a shooter yourself, Mr Matthews? I can't say I am, no. Um, back in the long and distant days when I was a schoolboy in South London, um, we uh, had a rifle club, so we used to go and shoot the old army Lee Enfield 303s. Uh, we used to go on a little minibus down to Bisley. Ah yes, I know Bisley. 
So what do you think to these new laws, checking social media and people's financial history? I mean, that's what gets me. What's that all about? I, I can understand concerns about social media in the light of things that have happened recently, that there, there were warning signs out there on social media, but because nobody was monitoring it, they weren't picked up. Uh, as regards the uh, financial records, I presume this is, you know, as much to do with unexplained large sums of money, uh, which could indicate perhaps criminal activity. Uh, or indeed, if someone's getting into real financial trouble, that, that can affect their state of mind and perhaps, you know, make them uh, more prone to self-harm. So I can understand where the, the legislation is coming from. Um, on the other hand, you know, we've always got to recognise there are a large number of people with a perfectly legitimate reason for holding a firearm and they should not be uh, stopped from holding a firearm uh, without due cause. Uh, you know, we, we are in a free country. Uh, and, you know, you should only stop someone holding a, a farm if there's, if there's a really good reason not to. So, yes, of course, you know, looking at social media is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Uh, checking financial, it's fine. It's how onerous that is and how strictly it's enforced. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have your own resources to consider, aren't you? How far do you go with that kind of thing? Um, you're quite right. Uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, we've got to be reasonably... Um, sensible about this we've got to take all the the steps we need to take to assure ourselves that those who hold guns legally are fit and proper people to hold guns legally uh, but we can't go overboard on this because we've got a lot of other crimes that we've got to be dealing with as well and in your day-to-day -day business mr matthews how much of an issue is gun crime okay well i mean the first thing to say that we've got a lot more problems with knife crime um, but no, gun crime uh, is really serious and very important. We've got to get on top of it. But in terms of actual numbers, in terms of how often someone walks through my door to say, Mr. Matthews, I'm afraid we have a problem, it's tiny. All of the gun crimes we've had in the past year uh, have been down to illegally held guns. So these are not uh, guns that are held by license holders. These are criminals with criminally held guns. And how many people does your area cover, if you don't mind my asking? Oh, um, in terms of population, it's about 1,150,000 people uh, mm -hmm. in all. Um, and of those, uh, I think 13 or 14,000 uh, legally hold a gun of one kind or another, either a shotgun licence or a firearms licence. Generally, the Leicestershire Police aren't, aren't too bad at the processing of the, the necessary paperwork. And, and when we have had hold-ups, it tends to have been, this is me, the police commissioner blow my own trumpet, not to be the police element of this. Yeah. Sometimes it's been, you know, getting the, the necessary certificate from a medical practitioner, or it's just sort of been generally handling the paperwork rather than the police doing the police bit of it. So am I right in saying that out of the 13 to 14,000 license holders in your area, there haven't been any instances with those breaking the law or being involved with the police whatsoever? Not that I'm aware. Uh, I mean, certainly not to do with firearms. Uh, it's not to say that <laughs> no one would be done for drink driving or something. Um, no, as far as I'm aware... Are you able to give me the figures for knife crime in your area, please? Just out of interest? I can give you the figures uh, up until m the year, up to March... Uh, of 2021 those are the most recent figures where we've okay. actually collated it all together uh, and then verified everything so uh, let's find the figure after right this is um, not knife crime in general so this is all knife crime so this includes um, stopping someone in the street and finding they've, they've got a knife okay. tucked down okay uh, it's 797 across Leicester Leicestershire and Rutland for the year up to March 21. Um, assault or a threatened assault with a knife, uh, we had 416, all right? Um, attempted murder with a knife is 12. An actual murder or manslaughter with a knife, the figure was five for that year. Right. Okay. Um, we've had no murders with guns during that period. So can I ask you, in your experience and your dealings with this, 
do you believe that there's an anti-shooting agenda within the establishment and that they're trying to regulate us out of existence? Death by a thousand cuts, if you will. Uh, no, is the easy answer. There are some uh, who do have an anti-shooting agenda. I think there is absolutely no doubt about that uh, at all. Uh, but if you're looking at the generality of PCCs, no. If you're looking at government policy, no. Um, I think what tends to happen is that whenever there is um, a, an awful incident, as we saw down in Plymouth recently, and you know they, they do occur elsewhere, uh, there is, of course, always a natural um, feeling, oh, something must be done. Uh, but at the same time, you know, sometimes people slip through the net. Uh, sometimes uh, mistakes are made. And I think the important thing here is to have a look. And if a mistake was made in issuing a licence to somebody who should not have got that licence under the current legislation, then it's not the legislation that's wrong. It's the way in which it's implemented. And so the lessons to be learned there would be about how you are um, issuing your licenses, how you are checking up on people, not the legislation it, it itself. I've never been a big believer uh, in the idea that legislation can solve problems. Sometimes it can, but very often, just passing a law, um, you know, makes no difference at all. Criminals are criminals. They're going to break the law if they want to break the law. Uh, so it is legislation isn't always the answer. But in answer to your question, then. No, there isn't. There are some individuals, but as a generality, government policy, no, not at all. Thank you very much for your time today, Mr Matthews. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? What I'd like to do, really, because um, I know that the audience that you have for your show is, is to reassure them uh, that anybody who's got a legitimate reason for wanting to have a gun uh, and doesn't fall foul of, you know, medical issues or, or, or uh, sus you know, any suspicion they might be involved in criminal activity. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you should get a license for your firearm. If you have any problems uh, with that, please contact my office and I'll see if I can track down where the hold up or the delay has been taking place because those who with a legitimate reason to have a firearm should have a firearm. Brilliant, thank you. Take care. I will do. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Well, that was certainly reassuring for me anyway uh, i hope you found that useful i'm nearly out of time but i did see talking of being responsible some people on social media had an idea of having a defibrillator on shoots i know certain companies do have them already so i thought i'd leave you with this video of strong shooting supporter vinnie jones telling you what to do if you haven't got a defibrillator and also this video of Mark Avery squirming his head off at the game fair which touches on the issue of burning which also reminds me the GWCT auction ends this Sunday so please do head over to their website and see what you can get your hands on. Big thanks to my guests this evening, thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed Newsnight and I'll see you next week. Bye bye. Proudly sponsored by Premier Gun.